We are live in three, two, one. Please start, sir. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope I'm audible to all. Am I audible to all? Uh, is, is, is it possible that uh, you can put a comment in the chat box or somewhere or just give me a go ahead if I'm audible to all? Is this audible? Yeah. Uh, Okay, so uh, good afternoon friends and this is Dr. Rohan Virani and uh, before I start anything, we should, I think we should all thank CIPLA and all the peoples in Dentoscope. They're doing an amazing job uh, giving us wonderful presentations, allowing the clinicians to share that knowledge and uh, today itself, you know, at around three o'clock we were supposed to start and 15-20 minutes we were not able to start. And I could see really how much the team, you know, they just, uh, all of them started helping me to get things on track. So I'm sure it must be a great effort from all of them uh, to organize such programs almost routinely for all of us. So big thanks to CIPLA and the other guys, the Dentoscope guys and everyone else in the team who is supporting. Uh, also one big irony happened and uh, I can't resist myself from uh, sharing is that, you know, nowadays we rely so much on technology. Everything was set. My laptop was ready. My Wi-Fi connection sorted, Zoom meet, everything, the Facebook live feed, everything done. And just at the last minute, everything uh, went haywire and we had to do manually. So I think this is one of the most appropriate starts for this topic because nowadays we are relying so much on the uh, digital planning, digital technology, that somewhere in our practice, we are losing the touch of uh, the surgical skills which are required to help our patients. And as we all know, basal implantology is more of surgery-driven implant dentistry rather than the current norm of prosthetic-driven dentistry. I'm sure if uh, whoever is listening today with us uh, will have an interesting afternoon where a lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, things which you have probably unaware of or something which is new, uh, all those uh, things, you will get a lot of surprises, I'm sure, in this presentation. So before I start, I've been told to give a good presentation or a good uh, introduction to myself uh, because, uh, uh, you know, they said that they want to cut on the moderator. So not to go in much of details, I have a private practice in Mulund, Mumbai, and uh, also written the first book on basal implants, my practice has almost shifted to 98, 99% basal implantology practice. We have a state-of-the-art dental practice in Mumbai. After doing my MDS, I went completely into implants and now I run a state-of-the-art practice with a five-chair dental setup, almost around 1,800 square feet practice with in-house imaging and everything in dentistry from digital scanning to laser to implant dentistry, or whatever probably all of us have heard of T-Scan, everything I'm using in my practice and I love to keep getting updated. And that's how I also entered this field of basal implants. Now, before launching ourselves into basal implants, like, you know, if, if possible, all of you can comment in this uh, Facebook comment box that whether probably you have heard of basal implants, you are a beginner, you have not done any basal implants, uh, are you a senior person who is doing basal implants but uh, having the problems or you're doing a lot of conventional implants but uh, want to shift to basal implants? So if you can comment right now in the comment box uh, about this, it will really help me uh, to, you know, uh, take this presentation in the direction of the viewers because there's so much to discuss and I really want it to be a fruitful afternoon for all. So please do comment down there and let me know what exactly uh, situation you are having with the basal implants. Now, the most common, hello, Dr. Varun, yeah, hi. So, uh, uh, so what commonly, uh, you know, the people are asking, uh, the, especially the beginners or people who have heard, is why should I do basal implants? So let me tell you, friends, that we are all aware 
that as the aging happens, you know, we are all aware there is a lot of bone loss which sets in. And once the bone loss sets in, there is not only a hard tissue loss, but also a lot of soft tissue loss which happens uh, along with it. So as clinicians, when the patients come to us, they are looking us for solutions to solve this problem. Now it is, you know, a very common joke in the implantology fraternity that when we come across resolved jaws or with patients having the systemic problems, asking for teeth, or uh, patients having mutilated dentition, asking for teeth, senior citizens asking for teeth. It's a very common joke, which I routinely like to quote is, uh, you know, patients who probably have good bone volume, they don't have the money. Those who have uh, money, they probably uh, don't have a good volume. Those who have both don't have the time. So, you know, it's a very common joke that somewhere as implantologists, I was always getting stuck up and, you know, I used to spend hours explaining my patient, Abhi aapka sinus niche aa gaya hai. I have to do a sinus lift then teach him the anatomy of sinus and then that uh, convince the patient to do the sinus lift procedure, uh, probably then a rich plate, bone graft, the story never ended. So, you know, we were conducting a lot of, uh, I would, I can say complex surgeries to give the patient what he came for, what was a teeth. So patient came for a teeth and we went all the entire circle. You will need this, you will need this. This will be the additional cost. Then you come back, then the bone will form, then you will do this. It, it never ended. And I think uh, in my personal experience, it was definitely uh, challenging, not only for us, but also for the patients to accept it. Another thing is that, you know, the, if, if I can say that with due respect, now let me put a very, very big disclaimer right now itself is my job right now is not to convince anyone to do basal implants. So people who want it, I'm always there to support it. For some reason, you feel that you have other modalities. Uh, please go ahead. I, I absolutely uh, I have due respect for other modalities also. So people who are doing hard and soft tissue grafting, uh, I, which I was doing years back and I gave up for all the reasons you will see now. Hats off to you, but uh, for me, doing those back-breaking surgeries, convincing the patient, uh, and fortunately, so far in my 15 years of practice, till today, I haven't got a patient asking for a papilla, but every day I get patients asking for teeth. So when I started shifting my practice uh, towards the basal implant, which in simple uh, words I can say is we give the patients what they come in for. I saw the drastic change, not only in the way I approach, in the way patients accepted the treatment plan, it became much more simple for me, which I will describe you along. Hello, Dr. Rajendra, how are you? So please keep commenting in the comment box. I am reading your comments. I love to interact with the audience so I know exactly how things are going. So do comment in the comment box, whether you are a beginner, you're doing basal implants or a conventional implantologist thinking about, please do comment down there. Uh, another thing, as I already mentioned, when we think about the conventional implants, we also have to add the cost of the bone grafting, the additional surgeries. Uh, plus, now let's, let's take a hypothetical situation and just be, or maybe, you know, just all of us, let us think for a minute uh, that, you got the patient, he's agreed to do whatever you ask him to do, okay? But you are telling, you know, how many of us are really, really, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> excuse me, how many of us are really confident enough to do on a daily basis a chin block, a direct sinus lift, no lateralization, acquire the inventory, first you acquire the knowledge to do it, then you acquire the inventory to do it, convince the patient to do it, do it successfully, and then have a good maintenance. I mean, how many barriers are coming all the time? So have you ever thought if people who are especially going to begin with implants, I get a lot of questions uh, for people, you know, they keep asking me whether, uh, you know, they, they can do this or they should get into conventional first basal. Just think about what I just told and you will get your answers. Okay. So another thing is once you have placed, put the uh, conventional implants, once you put the conventional implants, we all know that there is a lot and lot of meticulous oral hygiene 
which is needed otherwise we land up with a problem which is called as the periimplantitis now this is totally a man made disaster and trust me friends i am not uh, uh, hyper exaggerating but in my practice every month we end up removing 6 to 8 maybe 10 or more conventional implants simply because the patient could not maintain hygiene around it was periodontally compromised to start with he went back to his old habits so something or the other keeps going wrong but when we shift to basal implants as you see in my presentation this problem gets automatically uh, taken care of by the smooth surface of the bcs implants which i will share very soon hello dr pravin patel hi so coming to the basal implants as we see that in conventional implants we are forced to uh, do the implantology or you know graft the bone to accommodate the implant so let me give you an example let's say that i give i give we make a pant okay or a trousers and we ask everyone to fit in and whoever doesn't fit in someone who has a bigger waist is asked to do a weight loss and someone who has a very thin waist is asked to gain weight but you will not customize the pant for that person or trouser doesn't it sound very funny and silly to even listen to this that is what we are forced to do with conventional implants with the implant which can be loaded or which can be put only in a particular volume of bone we are forced to generate bone in that particular area just to accommodate the implant but if i tell you friends with basal implant the design is such that it will get locked in whatever is the available bone and there are prosthetic techniques to shift into what we would desire to be the prosthetic position of the teeth doesn't it sound interesting to you so this is what basal implant does it catches whatever is the available bone locks the implant over there and then you prosthetically have techniques to get the teeth in the correct aesthetic zone correct smile correct function so we are utilizing the available bone the designs of the implant are made to get into the available bone as opposed to the conventional implant hello dr santosh how are you so great to see you all guys i know a lot of you people around and you know all the clinicians who are seeing lot of times we get such cases where you know you get a severe vertical root resorption uh you you don't want to do a vertical grafting or let's say a case which is put on the right side of my screen which is which is put up in the right side of my screen where you are seeing uh, the lot of uh, just call and uh, where you are seeing just call where you are seeing a periimplantitis now this patient would not obviously want to go for complex surgeries already she has undergone the conventional implants gone through everything waited and she told me it was a delayed loading protocol which the doctor applied and so just uh, you see uh, what could be a solution to this kind of problems i will show you now the another common question uh, most people ask me okay doctor now you convince me to do basal implants are they successful let me tell you friends the simple answer is a resounding yes now why i can tell this confidently because i shifted to basal implants almost uh, 10 years back and i have understood that whatever the you know issues i had uh, probably uh, implant failure prosthetic issues was more a clinician related issue rather than a patient related issue where i have probably not followed the protocols not gone into the cortical properly not placed sufficient number of implants not done the correct occlusal balancing so somewhere i have made the mistake which today i can read in my old cases where probably uh, things have gone wrong in spite of that my friends let me tell you when we compare uh, everything i mean i'm comparing i'm not talking about those simple uh, case like a sing anterior root canal no i am talking about a case which is extremely resolved extremely pneumatized very thin ridges osteoporotic ladies a uh, severely de deficient bone severely deficient ridges insufficient mouth opening hyperactive gag reflexes uh, systemic issues you name it pay patients rejected by other doctors if i make them uh, in a group of 100 in spite of all the minor errors i have made and everyone it's a learning curve i have had success of around 98 to 99% in my practice 
that remaining one two percent problems also i am sure i can correct it because now i think i'm thorough with whatever basal implantology i need to know so this is how it is so definitely it is a hundred percent yes especially for the resolved jaws let's you know look at you you're comparing a upper third molar root canal with a broken file severe root canal let's compare that kind of cases in conventional implant and in basal implant and i will say confidently today that yes it is possible to rehabilitate every patient with the most resolved jaws also with the techniques of basal implant and have a long term success mind you friends all the cases i will show you today they have at least a 3 year follow up i am not going to show any of my recent cases i am showing you all of my cases where minimum in fact more there will be 3 4 year follow ups but most whatever cases i am showing you i have a minimum 3 year follow up and imagine friends if i have extracted the tooth placed the implant okay uh, and loaded it immediately and that case is surviving for 3 years patient is doing fine i really can't think about the reason why today suddenly the implant will have a problem uh, you know in loading so definitely i think it's a big yes when it comes to the success of uh, new uh, uh, the success of basal implants now another question most commonly people ask me i just give me a moment is can i do basal implants now if you divide the people doctors yes you i like your comments keep please keep commenting if you are a beginner absolutely you can go ahead there is uh, of course you need training let me tell you when i say go ahead i don't mean you just jump into doing implants what i mean is that you we all of us will need training share of knowledge but once you are uh, probably knowing what to do 101% in fact in our courses out of 10 people eight people are beginners and trust me friends they start doing at least the 60% of cases on day 1 implantologists who are giving the placing the conventional implant in fact let me tell you friends they need to unlearn and relearn because lot of this things which we are doing in basal implants there is a slight paradigm shift in in what how you have to think and people who are having tried and having the problems somewhere it's a learning curve friends and whatever best i can do to help you my numbers are there on the screen definitely any time you can just get in touch with me now in which all cases we can do basal implants i think the question is already answered in simple words all the cases so whether it is a case of destructive periodontitis aggressive mobility of the teeth atrophied maxilla atrophied mandible deficient bone volume patient not having the time patient having systemic issues who cannot go for extensive surgeries everyone and anyone can 100% be a candidate for basal implants simply because the protocols i am going to share right now so doctors were going to you know hold on into this presentation till the end you will get some amazing tips just hold on with me and you will see how most of the cases which can be solved with basal implants so this already i have covered with all of you so the biggest advantage being that we do not require any bone grafting procedures and it becomes very simple for us as clinicians for patients who come in asking for a tooth you get the tooth in how much time you get the tooth 2 to 7 days depending upon the various new protocols i am going to share so hi dr fahimi uh, nice to see you so like no system i can say is 100% but let me tell you friends with uh, the basal implants which are now the new term for basal implant is called strategic implantology because basal earlier was the disc implants which were a bit invasive i would say but now with the new protocols 95 to 98% of the cases i still do with the flapless technique now people will ask me which cases you don't do and why so friends here is my first set of tip so anywhere where there is of course a lesion or a cyst you need to enucleate that infection before placing the implant yes you can place basal implants even through infected areas but provided you have curated the primary infection so lose use lot of betadine curate that area and definitely you can place the implants provide you have a good 
cortical over there. In fact, if you don't have a cortical, I will show you cases where I've gone in the opposing cortical and definitely you can go ahead and place the implants. In cases where there is a lot of, uh, you know, mobile, uh, gum display like this, I do a reductive approach. What I mean by that is I remove the teeth, do a osteoplasty of the ridge and then place my implants to improve the smile line. In cases where there is severe resorption, I am not very confident about the uh, ridge angulation. I do open up the flap in the posterior region sometimes just to have a visual. So it's not like it's like a compulsion to do all the cases flapless, but definitely I would say as your experience goes higher, big, more and more, you will be able to attempt almost 95, 98% cases flapless. There are single piece implants, which is a big advantage. Now you need to understand this. It's, it's totally a mind shift here. When you have a conventional, you, you need a, you ask for a two piece implant by default, the coronal part has to be wider for all the attachments, the screw and everything. Now what happens is when you're placing the implants, the maximum crestal bone loss happens in this area. But when you have a single piece implant, okay, you can have the disc here and then automatically you have done a very thin permucosal penetration and a platform switch, which means chances of you having uh, something like a crystal bone loss are almost negligent. So, you know, actually the single piece is the need of the hour, but all of us have been brainwashed, uh, I would say to some extent more by the company guys that you require a platform switch, you require a hex compartment, a conical connection, no, you know, all those things. So just think about it the way I mentioned right now and see how uh, you will see the wonderful results even with the single piece implants. Hello, Dr. Nirali, nice to see you. Uh, so smooth surface implants, as I will show you, because there is a no surface roughening, okay, they are totally smooth. There is no risk of peri-implantitis. Mind you, friends, the rough surface implants which we use, the moment there is the gum level which goes down, just like it, you know, it, it's the threads are going to attract bone in the initial stage of placement of the implants. As there is thread exposure, the same surface roughening is going to attract plaque and have this problem of peri-implantitis, which just does not exist with the BCS implants, which are locked in the opposing corticals deep into the bone, which I'm going to show you right now how to do and the kind of cases. And another big advantage, especially for the beginner, is there is a fixed protocol. It's not that you know you have to think whether I should do a ridge plate, whether I should put a vertical bone graft, whether I should do a sandwich technique, whether I should do a, a soft tissue grafting. All this, uh, there's a defined set of 12 rules. Uh, if you can follow them, I think you can almost do every case with those 12 rules, which I may share right now if time permits. So this is the armentarium. Currently, friends, uh, I am associated with this company called Mono Implant. Uh, these are made in Switzerland. And this is the simplified armentarium of uh, this particular uh, company. Okay. So let me explain you quickly. Though this one kit, you can do all the cases. So this is another big uh, economical benefit to us where we don't have to uh, uh, you know, we don't have to place, uh, take multiple kits, invest in multiple armentarium. This one kit, you can do all kind of cases. Hello, Dr. Raghuram. Yeah, I will take up all the questions. Dr. Chaitali, just start taking a screenshot of the questions. So questions I will take up in the end. Uh, so this is the kit. If you see in the kit, there is a set of eight drills, but trust me, friends, all I need is probably the first and the second drill on the left only, the two and the 2.5 M drill. Everything else, all the other drills you see, in spite of so many cases, trust me, friend, I haven't used it so far. So the two drills are sufficient. The bone spreader is used in case of compressive implants. My most common choice of bone spreader is the 3.2 bone spreader. So even in the 3.2 bone spreader, I'm just using one spreader. And of course, the different drivers are given the large head, small head in terms of length, depending upon the patient mouth opening, you can ratchet that in. So isn't it amazing to hear that with just this one simplified kit, you're done for almost all the cases. All we need to know is now, what are the implants? Where do we need to place it and how to place it, which I'm going to 
share with you very soon. But before I share that with you, let me tell you, friends, where this concept of basal implantology comes from, it is nothing new. Our friends in the uh, orthopedics have been using this for centuries. So as you can see on my screen here, okay, is the cursor visible? Yeah. Okay. I think the cursor is not visible, but nevertheless, for all these people who have joined, if you can just see the upper image here, okay, uh, we can probably, you can see, appreciate the trauma line, just switch on the mobile light. You can appreciate the trauma line which is happening in, I will, I will just see, you can see with the pointer here, now I'm placing it, the white line here, okay? So you can see the trauma line and you can see this screws here. So this is a fractured tibia and you can see the orthopedician has placed the smooth surface screws, okay? And connected them to a plate. So if I compare this, if you come down here, this implants which I'm placing from the first cortical to the opposing cortical, my implants are those screws and the bridge which I'm giving here, as you see here, the bridge, the framework which you are giving here, okay, that is probably the, uh, that is probably the splint over here. So this is exactly from the principles of orthopedics where, you know, the patients over there start walking on day three, day four. And similarly, if we apply these principles nicely, even our patients can start chewing, loading their teeth from day three or day four. Okay, so let me quickly come to what should exactly be done. And this, my friends, whoever understands this one slide, I think can start thinking about getting into basal implants. Hello, Dr. Hemant. Hello, Dr. Raghuram. Yeah. So coming to the BCS implants point of engagement or the decorticals, so friends, if you see here, now unfortunately the pointer is not, yeah, are you able to see the pointer? No. So, no. So pointer is not seen. So I'm really sorry. I can't help much on that. But uh, nevertheless, if you see in the anterior area, you have marked the green arrows. That's the nasal cortical. That's the junction of maxilla and the floor of the nose. Okay, you see these lines over here, the green lines going here, that's the frontonasal. If you see the red lines here, that is the floor of the sinus. And distally, the most hyped topic of today is the pterygoid area, which I'm going to show you very, and I have a very, very exciting video for all of you who are going to attend this. I think with that video, the, the pterygoid is just going to be crystal clear. I mean, you can just place it uh, today evening, if you just watch that video two or three times, it's, it's going to be that simple, flapless. So just hold on for that video to come. Uh, nevertheless, when we come to the mandible, this is a highly mineralized zone, which is called as the premental area. So this is the premaxillary area, sinus area, and the pterygoid area. And the mandible we divide into the premental area, okay, which is highly mineralized, and the posterior mandible, where all of us are scared of the inferior alveolar now. But trust me, friends, with a single drill, I will show you how to handle the complicated cases where you can go lingual or buccal to the now, which is fancily called as now bypass. Actually, it's just a single drill concept where you can place your implants either buccal to the now or lingual to the now. So when you've done that, it is like you have bypassed the now and the fancy name for it or the scary name for what people think is the now bypass. Okay. So coming to, as you see below my screen here, you can see the implants which are placed in the anterior region engaging the nasal floor. You can see the implant engaging the pterygoid area. You can see the implant engaging the pre-mental zone. And here you see uh, the implant in the distal mandible perforating out of the lingual cortical. I repeat, perforating. So when I used to, uh, you know, post my pictures on Facebook uh, five, seven, eight years back, people used to have all the, uh, I would say, good comments and the good words written below. But trust me, friends, the moment you understand that the way when the implant is locked into the second cortical, there is also a periosteum. Okay, so you place the implant here and you lifted the periosteum and bone will form around it. It's almost like you know, if I put it very funnily. 
uh, your eyebrows will go up. It's like doing a sinus lift, a summers technique in the mandibles. So what we do there, we lift the sinus, place the implant, and in that area, the blood clot forms and forms bone. Similarly, in the mandible, when I perforate and lift the periosteum, the blood will form over there and it forms bone and you got a wonderful implant ready to load. So uh, that was something very interesting. If you like this, please put a thumbs up in the comment. I'm watching your comments. Thank you for so many thumbs up. I really love watching all the comments coming here. Dr. Sham, good afternoon. Okay. So coming Dr. Sham, you're lucky you've come to the most exciting part of the presentation. Okay. So coming to the OPG. Now, friends, let me tell you the best x-ray to evaluate your corticals is the OPG. Okay. Of course, you can take help of the CBCT. You can make stereolithic models, but nothing, nothing, nothing will show you the corticals like the OPG. So people who are having trouble uh, using the basal implants, my big tip to you here is start relying on OPG more than the CBCT. So when you look at the OPG, you can clearly see the zone of engagement in the anterior floor. And most important is, you know, the angulation which you need for your pterygoid implant, you can only and only plan on the OPG X-ray. In the lower zone, okay, you may need to take help, especially the beginners. There are certain tips and tricks to know the position of inferior alveolar now in the mouth directly on the OPG, but that could be a separate one hour discussion. I'm really sorry, I can't take that right now. But for beginners, you can simply do the CBCT as well to know where to go buccal or lingual to the now. But one tip I can quickly give all the people who have taken this afternoon and been with me is, if the patient opens the mouth and if you feel an undercut, it's a it's a simplest of case you can have. All you need to do is keep your finger in the undercut and go towards your finger. Never, ever, ever you are going to hit the now. Okay? So, so this is one great tip I have shared with you. Whenever the patient comes, okay, you're worried how complex the patient, uh, the case could be. Just open the mouth and feel the undercut. The nasal floor is always going to be there. Pterygoid is always going to be there. The chin is always there. You're only worried about the uh, uh, in, you are inferior alveolar now. And you just feel the undercut. And it's a very simple case for putting a BCS implant over there, my friends. And rest of the things you can always plan on the OPG and the CBCT. Now, what are the challenges uh, for case planning, friends? If you want, you can, I would suggest you can take a screenshot of this particular screen, okay? Uh, in the anterior zone, always remember the patient has come for a tooth. So ask the patient to smile and check his gingival zenith. If it's a case of gummy smile or something like that, there is additional stuff you may have to add before you just get into or ask the patient, you may get some amount of pink porcelain. All those things are there when you're looking at uh, this situation. Look at the smile line and look for whether the occlusion is a deep bite. Okay, because if it's a deep bite and you're going to load, forget the basal, you're going to load any prosthesis, it's definitely going to come into the head and you will require techniques to counteract it. If time permits, I will give a small tip on that also. Do ask me during the question and answer session. Okay. Another important thing in the posterior zone is we need to restore the bilateral balanced bite. So a lot of times the patients come to us saying, Dr. Saab, pehle ye side kar do, fir mein dekhunga, fir ye side karo. It's an absolute disaster if you try and do that. You are going to place the implants and ask the patient to chew unilaterally. God help you. So never, ever, ever create a unilateral chewing pattern, even for your other routine FMR cases. Uh, pneumatized sinus, of course, we need to plan because as I marked in red, these are the corticals which are really thin, porous. You don't sometimes get the good torque. So you need to use a wider body implants, which I will show you soon. So these are, you know, in a gist, almost I've given you the treatment plan protocol for, of course, this every line which I mentioned in this uh, presentation or here, 
is a separate topic by itself but for all you people i am trying to cover up as much as possible uh, dr yashant yes i will repeat the trick you can ask me again after during the question answer session i will repeat it for you don't worry okay and for people who want to know more okay we now have and i proudly present to you the latest the earliest you know the only available literature before this was nearly 8 years back what was written with a lot of techniques which are almost outdated and let me tell you friends i have used the entire lockdown to compile every minute detail inside this book for people yeah thank you for a lot of people who have uh, read the book you are giving me the positive comments i can see for people uh, who want to get into basal or are doing basal implants just read this three times trust me friends you will not have to ask anyone else is my guarantee if you go through this book for people who want to join our three days program or our residency program which across happens where you place around 20 implants where i am holding the suction for you you're welcome to contact me on this numbers for people who need any support for the implant for the surgical kit for the welder for the adapters physio dispenser or want to learn from the comfort of their own i have the ultra hd videos step by step you will know exactly what to do with the book if you you redo the video and the book together i think you're done and then all you need probably is some more interaction over a short three day course and trust me friends i'm not over promising uh, i i know after uh, you know mentoring so many doctors i can assure you that in the first five week itself you will end up attempting and successfully doing at least 80% of your cases if you follow all this for people who want the additional information want to remain in touch with me you are most welcome to join our whatsapp groups i am putting the link right now so please join them before they get full join our whatsapp groups you can see my videos which are totally free on youtube channel i post a lot of videos i have recently posted the now bypass video in that youtube channel so people who want to see exactly how to do the now bypass go and watch the video follow me on facebook and instagram and if still if you want my number for contacting me is there now coming to the most 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 important part of the lecture is understanding these implants friends let me tell you this are our shastra for someone who does not understand which shastra to use where is a failure even before he starts so please listen to this three four slides very carefully especially the beginners the kos or the compressive implant is nothing but a conventional implant in a rough surface design and a one piece you never ever ever perforate any corticals with the kos implant if you want you can just go and touch it but never perforate because they are compressive implants as i told you before we under drill we under drill and place the implants the most common diameter of implant used if you want you can write it down here is 3.2 and 3.7 so companies which market you 4.1 3.0 just forget about it you are never going to use that just you need 3.2 and 3.7 diameter you need to follow all the protocols like remaining away from the now away from the sinus uh, you need a good bone volume around the implant 1 mm on each side just like the conventional implant you need to follow all the protocols for a compressive implant it works on the principle of compression what i mean by that is when you under drill and place a wider body so if i'm drilling 2 mm and i place a 3.7 or a 3.2 mm implant you are compressing the cancellous bone and creating the properties of a cortical bone what is cortical bone it's a dense bone it's a highly mineralized bone so you are compressing the cancellous bone and giving it properties of a cortical you're compressing the cancellous bone and giving it properties of a dense bone and this is called my friends corticalization of cancellous bone coming to 
my personal favorite friends please listen to this very carefully all cases can be done with bcs implant so now if you ask me my current choice of implant for almost any situation is bcs i rarely rarely use because rough surface implant peri implantitis you are doing flapless you go wrong here and there thread exposure you will not even know or you have to open up the flap i am i'm done with all these things so for me my personal favorite and the most important thing is i can go and perforate the cortical and use the power of the corticals with bcs implant so if you ask me any given point of time that what probably implant should i use my answer always always will be the bcs or bicortical why it's called bicortical it is going from one cortical into the opposite cortical and these are the highly polished implants another big tip i will give you friends for all practical purposes the diameter of choice is 3.5 now lot of you people are shocked how do i put a 3.5 implant in a thin ridge friends let me go back quickly to my first slide okay whenever there is a bone resorption as you see on the right side of the screen even if the bone resorbs here the width is always available on the bottom and this is where the change in design is going to help us because when we do it the conventional implants i have seen lot of companies now i don't want to name they are recommending the immediate load protocols with the conventional implant but friends just think about this if you have a wide body at the coronal part the compression is going to come at the crystal bone and the cortical bone which was the highly mineralized zone you could have locked with the disc the implant should have been wider there you are you are putting a conical implant over there now just think about this for a minute and i will not have to say anything more is which design is better so coming to the point again which i wanted to make is that you can use the bcs 3.5 implants occasionally like i said that when uh, uh occasionally like when i said in the pneumatic sinus area where the bone is uh, you know volume might be good but the bone is of poor quality i recommend strongly using the 4.5 and the 5.5 diameter implant which is very very good you not only engage the sinus floor but you engage the buccal cortical and the lingual cortical so friends just write this tip for me if you are going to go anywhere near the sinus floor of the sinus the diameter of choice is 4.5 or 5.5 if you are engaging anywhere in the anterior region the diameter of choice is 3.5 pterygoid 3.5 or a 4.0 depending upon the bone density now another very very important tip is because these are very smooth surface implants the implant of choice in infected sockets has to be bcs what happens is you are going beyond the point of infection so your implant is not if i have extracted the tooth from here curated the infection locked into the cortical my implant is in the deeper zone where there was no infection and the implant design it's wider at the base and becomes thinner as we come up uh, coronally it allows the drainage of infection as opposed to a bullet shaped implant which is wider in the crown which does not allow the purulent discharge so any periodontitis case any case with infection it it is works wonderfully i have done hundreds of cases i have forgotten about them just cure the infection place the implant and forget okay now another very important property you will love to hear this my friends is the bcs implant you can bend them into a knot so lot of people ask me how much can you uh, how much can you probably bend your implants to correct the angulation you can tie a knot what restricts the bending capacity of a bcs implant these are very isoelastic is not the implant it is the elasticity of the bone so if you feel that the bone is going to fracture when you're bending definitely you should stop and then probably use a angular adapter i just showed you two slides back with the qos of the rigid implants because they are very rigid you can bend only 10 to 15 degrees so cases where i'm probably you know going into the opposing cortical doing a bypass 
by default, the, the implant of choice for good prosthetic should always be a BCS, bicortical implant. So here I feel that in this slides, if you have heard me from start, you will see that there's a total paradigm shift. We are going into the cortical perforating using a smooth surface implants and going into the infected socket. So all this is a good paradigm shift you people can just start thinking about. Coming to something even more interesting is how to start placing these implants. So friends, here I show you a very routine case with very good bone volume. Okay, now let's say you have a patient like this with good bone volume. Now for beginners, what does good bone volume mean? If you're going to place an implant of 3.2 or 3.7, you require two millimeter width on the buckle and two millimeter width on the lingual. Why I'm saying two millimeter? Because for beginners, you need to keep one millimeter as your scope of error, margin of error. So my friends, for beginners, you require one to two millimeters of bone around the implants. From the inferior alveolar now, you require two millimeters uh, distance for the compressive implant. You just place, if you get a case like this, just look into the HD videos, which you can take it. Just drill the first drill, bang in the center of the ridge, and you will enjoy ratcheting this implant in, place eight of them, make a measurement and fix it. That's how simple your life can be when it comes to these implants. Coming to slightly challenging cases for BCS implants, where it requires multicortical engagement, you will start seeing my images, something like this. Now, friends, you can see on the left side of the image, there's a double pterygoid. On the right side of the image, now people who are wondering pterygoid, pterygoid, Dr. Rowan is telling how to do it. Just wait for one, two more slides and you will jump with joy with what I'm going to share with you. Okay, and I'm sure with that slide, you will be able to st uh, start placing confidently today evening. Just wait for it, okay? So on the left side of the image, you will see double pterygoid. On the right side, you see single pterygoid. As you see in the sinus area, these are in the maxilla, the wider implants and the implants of 3.5 engaging into the nasal cortical. This drilling, my friends, I do with the straight handpiece, not with the contra. It's very easy if you take a straight handpiece, you're holding the maxilla and just going straight with your 10 to 15,000 RPM, just go in, okay? And push the foot pedal, you get the initial resistance. It's like doing an endo, you know, you are in the enamel and then you get a drop. So what happens is I go into the first cortical, I get a drop, I continue and I continue till I find a resistance. And the moment I get a resistance, I see the marking on my drill. It tells me 14 mm, 17 mm. So I know that the length of my implant is going to be 17 mm or 14 mm, which means that Never, ever, ever I am going to plan which length I'm going to use for my implant. It is purely by knowing by a tactile feel. Have you ever planned how deep you will go inside to open up a root canal? It's really not needed. Simply go in the center or remain palatal in the maxilla and perforate. At the time of perforation, you see the marking on the scale. And that's how you get a 3.517 and just go and lock it. Similarly, in the mandible, in the pre-mental area, we never perforate the buccal or lingual. It's a highly mineralized zone. I already told you. Just go wherever the resistance is there, place the implant. In the posterior mandible, we go lingual, engage the lingual cortical, or if you're going buccal, engage the buccal cortical and just left and bend your implants. Okay, before I show you how to do this, most important thing also is to take care of the occlusion. Occlusion in basal implants, my friends, is a, have we lost the feet? Because I'm going on occlusion. Are you able to see the screen on occlusion? Please put it in the comment section, please. Because here I have shifted my, uh, presentation, but I am not seeing that on the Facebook live feed. So are you able to guys see the uh, slide on occlusion? Please comment in the comment section. 
if you are able to see the slide on occlusion because i feel yeah okay it's running a bit late so i think it will come in some time so coming to the occlusion the most important tip on occlusion is we never ever give a unilateral chewing always plan a bilateral bite by placing the implants distally we are avoiding the cantilevering option absolutely we don't believe in cantilevers now isn't that a wonderful prosthetic protocol the implant occlusal schemes is a separate chapter it's like a half day lecture for me so i will not get into details but definitely you need to follow what is called as the supporting polygon concept and a lingualized occlusal scheme so these are very good and important tips when it comes to occlusion we give the occlusion on three teeth that is tooth number 4 5 and 6 palatal cusp and follow the shortened dental arch concept when it comes to the full mouth rehabilitation now i will show you one very interesting video of how things actually run in real time uh in the clinic when it comes to extraction immediate implantation so let me just quickly begin this video so this is the extraction done this is the drill which i was sharing about okay and the straight hand piece just hold in the socket and go palatal and hit the nasal cortical now as i told you friends most often i use only the single drill but in this particular case the bone was really really hard dense bone i could feel it so i used the second drill just to open up a bit like how we do in conventional implant and you will see me placing the implant with a hand grip that is another favorite tool which gives me absolute control of where i'm placing the implant so this is my second drill you can see the marking on the screen the moment i get a 3.5 14 or a 17 you will feel the drop you can see the drop on my screen right now as we speak just concentrate on the hand piece and you can see the drop happening right now see the drop is going to come yeah you could see the drop coming and the bone flakes coming along with it and then i just open up a bit more and take the implants now here i introduce you one more amazing implant it is called as the mot implant in mono implants it is called as the micro th thread implant or the tpg you know in simpler dent is all the same it's a totally smooth surface kos implant a rough surface design but a polished implant for infected socket simply because at the crystal end it will hold the 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 uh, crevice or bone from falling down and in this cases if required in the jumping distance i will just put bone not for my implant just to make up the bulk of the hard and soft tissue which i will show you right now in the video you can see the hand grip you amazing torque you know you get a torque of 45 50 60 ncm you can be rest assured you are in the cortical amazing torque you can just simply go ahead and load nothing to fear and this torque my friends is simply because you are under drilling and then placing the implant of a superb design highly aggressive going right into your osteotomy and locking the cortical you can now appreciate the bending of the implant so we after placing the implant we bend it in the correct prosthetic position and this is again i will show you in the second implant the similar protocol and now we make the impression with the copings and you can see the lab analogs getting placed here 
now the uh, lab technician part and the prosthetic part is beyond the scope of this lecture but everything i put in absolute details in the book so just get hold of it and i'm sure it will be crystal clear to all of you and then what i do the patient came to me for teeth not for screws in the mouth so what i do is i take my composite okay here you see the bone graft in the jumping distance to maintain the bone volume and once that is done i trim the abutments a bit and then i use composite which i will show you right now okay just have a look yeah hello dr ujagir hello dr rajendra nice to have you here along okay so this is regular suturing and then what i will show you is how patient can come into the clinic with a broken tooth and walk out with at least a temporary set till you make your permanent so this is amazing in just less than half an hour to 45 i'm sure all of you get patients with front broken teeth from today you can just you know tell your patients i can give you a tooth immediately and you just check on your conversion ratio and this is one of the reasons i mentioned in my book 5x your implant practice trust me friends the topic of this lecture is not basal implant it is how to 5x your implant practice because patients get what they come in for teeth extract implant give a temporary if you want to and in a couple of days just finish the case there are protocols how to manage is all what we need to learn so this you can see is the temporary uh, composite work i have done to give the patient temporaries if you want you can get the lab fabricated temporaries if you have good lab support a heat cure or a cold cure temps also should do good uh, and then once the healing happens meanwhile you just have, i will show you in my subsequent video i have replaced this with the zirconia crowns okay so this was my temps so patient leaves with the temps you can see the beautiful healing okay no rub no no tearing the periosteum and see look at the finish look at the margins look at this zirconia crown everything done in just a matter of half an hour to 45 minutes your patients will love you you will start enjoying your practice stop complicating things with difficult stuff just keep your life simple my friends okay coming to another very challenging case uh, dr jibesh hi uh, you people will appreciate this case where i haven't done any kind of sinus lifts so extracted the root pieces in the palatal socket i placed a 5.5 implant engaging the floor of sinus and in the mesial socket a 3.5 and you got two roots maybe sometimes you can even add a third one okay and just uh, nowadays i use the welders but if you don't have the welder just go ahead with the crown load it and you will enjoy this kind of work your patients will like it they can just get the tooth in 2 3 days without you hammering for the sinus lift or you explaining them anything regarding the sinus lift procedure another very nice case is using the pterygoid implant for the seven i place the pterygoid put place the implant in the palatine bone okay just google palatine bone you will know it's a very small bone very close to the between the palate and the uh, pterygoid area that's where you can lock one of the implant just go straight in the through the in you know like how you're doing a seven endo just go in the direction you will get the palatine bone and hit it place your implant and forget about it load it with the crown and have a peaceful night sleep for people who now the gift is here for people who have waited so long with me friends for anyone who wants to learn how to place the pterygoid implant this is what you wanted a free video on how to place it explain to you step by step all you need to do is whatsapp on the number i am giving you right now and you can get this video from us 
and this is my gift to all of you who have seen this uh, webinar so far yeah okay so just note this number 9321533493 and i will go through your whatsapp messages coming to basal implants in segments <clears throat> this was what i shown you this image before and you know all of you who are thinking whether we will do the vertical bone graft or whether we'll just cut the two teeth and make a bridge work let me give you a very simple solution my friends okay and this is what we need our rescuer the bcs implant just a single drill going into the buccal cortical single drill into the lingual cortical you're flaring the implants having a wider force distribution this case start to finish trust me my friends i have finished in 20 minutes just in 20 minutes i have finished this kind of case without explaining much to the patient about complicated surgeries allowed it to heal and given him beautiful zirconia prosthesis this patient has referred me 12 other patients just because the other doctors told him complicated stuff and he did not want to grind his adjacent healthy teeth so friends this is the power of technology uh, this video is available to all on youtube so people who have not joined my youtube channel yet just join it and you can see how it was done on the youtube dr varun thank you for your acknowledgement bcs implant going buckley and you see the other implant bending of the implant you can see how wonderfully it has come in the correct prosthetic direction and here you see my friends the other implants buccal lingual and the only reason i had to open up the flap is you see there was a lot of granulation tissue in fact when you open the flap you see the lingual cortical you just have to make a pin prick there it's as simple as that and then you can see this beautiful healing amazing healing okay you will not real because you have not you know uh, severed the periosteum or done any mind complicated it just heals like magic patient is surprised okay and then you give the wonderful prosthesis and you can see this small defect over here my friends uh, it's just going to get mineralized more and more as days go by it's like your extraction socket confined defect to uh, place the implants in the cortical you can see the flared up implants going divergent on both the sides taking the occlusal load first permanent molar loaded immediately in a resolved situation and when what will you do when you come to patients like this where the patient has he is almost now 68 or 70 years old highly diabetic cannot control his diabetes level keeps fluctuating he literally folded his hands doctor please don't tell me to undergo a waiting time and complicated sinus lift procedure because some other doctor had told him that's what you will need and then this is what we do my friend remove the ailing and the failing implants place the bcs implants and because i wanted to give him some kind of temporaries i do what is called as intraoral welding again a separate topic by itself sink crystallize these implants conventional another no tip you can very well uh, connect basal implants with completely healed conventional implants my friends so this is another common query go ahead and do it absolutely no problem provided this conventional implants are not going are ailing or failing and this is what we did for him you can see the mixture of conventional and basal implants pterygoid implant no cantilevering as what was done earlier and now the pterygoid implant is going right till the end nasal and cortical engagement and you can see the smile back again on this gentleman another case very tough case very limited mouth opening but the picture is self explanatory with the smile completed this case with the pterygoid smooth surface bcs implants this patient had you know just i i agree that some case patient, some of this could have been just the plain fillings but the patient wanted the perfect looking smile maybe he wanted to fight back in life that was his motivation and we this patient is is almost 7 years i've done him he's still in touch with me on the whatsapp on all of my birthday he messages me i ask him how he's doing and he's doing absolutely fine very happy not ready to come down again to me 
he says dr saab sab kuch theek hai that's what his con reply is always an immediate loading in a extremely resolved jaw let me tell you extremely resolved is not just resolved it's extremely resolved the bone was like porous soft it's like sand and we have done immediate loading i have a four year follow up with this lady she is doing absolutely fine you can see the combination of compressive and basal implants in the protocols applied over here okay yes dr seshav thank you so much okay immediate loading seshav this was exactly like your case which you shared with me and we restored this lady with the full functional set of teeth in just 3 days time when the other doctors had recommended her red split bone grafts and a waiting of nearly 6 months so this is how and of course it was done flapless another case probably the one which is closest to my heart i don't want to name but this patient lady is done uh, was operated by one of the senior most legendary implantologist i respect him a lot such things can happen with anyone and she came to me uh, with this kind of situation where in the maxilla things are doing fine but in the mandible you see it is like a failing ailing implant and she started developing pain and we all know nothing is going to survive on 3 and she is 70 plus and with the principles of basal implantology all i needed to do was give her one hour place two implants going buccal and three implants going lingual we always over engineer such cases and remove the ailing failing implant and just add a few more wide diameter implants and make the smile come back again so friends our life is already very very complicated with this covid crisis stressful situation all the other things which keep pulling us down every day things can get simple it's matter of how we apply our brain logic and utilize our time to attend webinars like this my message to you is let's not complicate dentistry we have enough things to juggle in life uh, thank you very much i will take up a couple of questions now quickly if time permits we have already overshot on our time but with respect to people who have spent their afternoon i will quickly take up the questions meanwhile i am waiting for your response to this presentation friends i hope it was useful to you any speaker would like some kind of uh, appreciation even a negative critical comment is most welcome do comment in the comment box right now i am reading your comments okay so dr raguram has asked do uh, compressive implants osteo integrate or or is osteo fiction dr raguram as i mentioned to you the compressive implants are nothing but the conventional implants in one piece design they are surface roughened and yes they do osteo integrate as well so i hope i have answered your query answer is yes they do osteo integrate okay dr yashwant is asking me uh, do repeat the trick okay what was that question about so dr yashwant the simplest way to do uh, take care of this is this webinar is uploaded on the facebook channel just go into it rewind it and repeat it i'm sure because i've given so many tips in this presentation i'm not very sure which one you are referring to so definitely uh, you can just rewind it and uh, go through it uh, thank you dr sandeep for giving your appreciation dr raguram dr yashwant okay Uh, sudeep very much i am looking for all these people you please uh, be in touch with me on my whatsapp groups my youtube channel and i would really like to hear more from you uh, there are the questions are just flooding now on the whatsapp also but unfortunately we are short of time so i hope i get opportunity to speak to you okay dr varun has said how to convert acrylic denture which is placed in 3 days to pfm in how many months to remove old denture a very good question thank you dr varun for asking me this one year is what you need to wait because that is the time for complete mineralization so if you go through 
the entire uh, we don't have the time to uh, go through the entire bone physiology and cycle but the simple answer is for the bone to go undergo the primary mineralization and complete the entire cycle of secondary mineralization you need to wait for one year minimum as long for converting it there are various tips and tricks i will quickly it's like a separate one two hours maybe three hours presentation but i'll quickly tell you if you have planned it initially the simplest thing you can do is use a welder just weld it give out the acrylic processes and it's like a cake walk to just cut it off second method is i will show you maybe in some other presentation there are certain designs of framework where initially they can accept the acrylic and once you're done with the acrylic phase all you need to do is dismantle or cut off the acrylic and switch it to pfm prosthesis the third option is a manual way which sounds very difficult to some people where you have to sit and cut the acrylic but friends there are certain tips and tricks to cut it in less than 20 minutes so few months back i have done i don't know if it's still there but i've done a live feed on facebook where i've cut the acrylic processes in less than 20 minutes just scroll through my facebook pages if you're lucky it will be still there so you can just manually cut it it takes less than 20 minutes if you know exactly how to do it one tip i will share with all of you is invest in an electric handpiece my friends it's a beauty of machine it gives you good torque and invest in good metal cutting bars and cutting off a bridge even your pfm bridges it should not be very difficult with this kind of armamentarium it just takes less than 20 minutes to half an hour to change a bridge in fact to take the tma abutments the secondary impression do a shimmer technique can take an x-ray see if all the screws are in place then retrieve the processes send it back to the lab Trust me, I have done it myself. It is more time consuming than doing what I just mentioned right now. Any other questions? I think I will take another one or two questions and then we'll have to wind up. Yes, any literature, I have given a lot of links in my textbook. You can just WhatsApp me. I will send you the links available. Even if you Google it, there is ample literature. And if you can trust me, I have seven to eight years of follow-up of patients doing good in my own practice. So definitely there is ample literature. You can buy the textbook of BOI. And trust me, friends, for people who don't know, the basal implants, the lateral disc came in even before the bullet shape implants. So there is ample literature about this basal implantology in various foreign books. And now also in my book, just you can go through it. Uh, Dr. Praveen Patel is asking any cases of, sorry, Dr. Shyam. Dr. Shyam is asking, how are you always sure that the inferior alveolar now is always buccal or in the middle? Uh, Dr. Shyam, excellent question. As I told you that, of course, beginners can use a CT uh, guided. There is another tip I can give you for people who are not sure about the tips and tricks or about the surgical aspect. I have dedicated a separate uh, a separate topic in my book, a separate uh, chapter in my book, which is totally on doing stent guided basal implants. So if you are not sure, if you don't have the detailed knowledge about the anatomy, but in general, let me tell you, the inferior alveolar canal, it starts lingually. It is in the area of seven. It then comes in the center in the area of six. And then as it exits in the area of mental foramen, it is buccal. As long as you are going towards the lingual cortical plate friend, your inferior alveolar canal can never be there, except if there is severe bone atrophy. Let me, uh, my presentation has stopped, but as you saw in my first screen, when there's severe atrophy, the now will be lingual. In that case, if you've seen it on the CBCT, all you, in fact, it is simpler to just go buccal to the now with one drill. So it's not that difficult at all once you know what to do. Okay. And uh, Dr. Raghuram has asked, where can we get your book? Just I have the WhatsApp number is on the screen. Just WhatsApp on this number given and you will get it in your hand by tomorrow. Okay. I will just quickly take, I'm also posting the link right now of where to get the book. So people who are interested, you can just simply click on my chat link over here and you will get it in your hand. Last question I'm 
the questions are just going on and on and i wish i could have taken but i am getting the call from the moderator also so i need to stop this session i'll just take one last question before i close it i apologize for people who want their questions answered i've given my whatsapp number you can send it over there okay yeah excellent question by my one of my dear friends well wisher dr pravin any uh, any chance any he what is asked is any case of mobile basal implants reintegrated it's a super question to end on if it's a kos implant all you need to do is give 1 minute of silence to the implant remove it and bury it wherever you wish to it's not going to reintegrate so a compressive rough surface implant wapis zinda nahi ho sakta and that is why the beauty of bcs implant comes in if ever you find a bcs implant radio lucency around it it is sterile loosening friends let me tell you you can recover the implant unfortunately the time does not permit me to show you that case it's a gem of a case where but it's mentioned in my book mind you it's mentioned in my book so what you can do is simply relieve the occlusal load and you will see like magic the bcs implant will reintegrate because it was just sterile loosening there is not peri implantitis it is excess of occlusal forces just let it heal just remove the occlusal forces for a couple of days or a month maybe if your patient is heavy chewer inject botox and you will start believing in the magic of basal implants so thank you friends i will not be able to take up any more questions i really appreciate all of you spending this afternoon with me i hope it was uh, very kindly it was helpful to you i look forward to connecting with all of you i'm dropping my links please please drop your comments in the comment box i will reply once i'm free uh, please mention whatever you felt about the lecture i will be happy to read it it will be a small thing you can do for me and please do get in touch with me on the links i'm providing uh, thank you very much i hope i can sign off moderators adwait please let me know if i can uh stop my sh uh, screen share now thank you very much uh, signing off please take care take care all of you bye